Hey all cheers, welcome back to the channel. It is about 11.30 p.m. Pacific time on Thursday the 15th and it is 90 degrees in the house right now. We're in Oakland, there's a heat wave, there's no air conditioning. I have to keep the window closed because of the sound and I just watched a lot of glow. So I just decided to put this princess over to the side. So if you're new to the channel, welcome, please subscribe. If you have already subscribed, thank you so much. Either way, please give me feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down, either way, comments uh, down below. If you dig this type of content, um, please know that if you are new to the channel, there are several playlists that you can access. A huge one would be How to Disney, which is obviously my Disney blogs. There is a Happy Period playlist, which is specific to the nonprofit that I work with which provides menstrual hygiene products to the homeless and underserved here in the Bay Area and around the country. Uh, there's a women's issues playlist which will overlap a little bit with Happy Period but we'll go into some other rants and tirades that I have gone on in the past and is an extension of a women's group that I have been facilitating on Facebook for the past few years. And there is also a playlist for just straight up film and TV reviews. So this is probably going to land in four different playlists. It's been a minute, like I said, we have a lot to cover. Um, this is my itinerary for like four videos worth of content, but it's been hot. I haven't been motivated. We've had friends and family visiting and I was at Disneyland for the return of the Main Street Electrical Parade. Oh my God. Please watch that video if you are a child of Disney World or Disneyland. Yes, just yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah, so bear with me, it's hot as fuck in here. One of the things I wanted to talk about, well, I had an itinerary and then Netflix dropped to Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar, and Now and Then. Uh, on August the 12th so that got written in here somewhere but I'm gonna try and get my bearings and we're gonna start with something that we talked about in two previous videos um, both of which are probably in the women's issues playlist uh, fasten your seatbelts but I just wanted to like talk just for a second about the fact that the E. Jean Carroll allegations against our president what happened? Like, dust in the wind. Like, I mean, cue the who. Like, what happened? I knew nothing was gonna happen happen, but I thought it would stay in the news cycle like a tidbit longer than it did, and it didn't. Like, her book came out uh, shortly after the allegations uh, did, um, I'm not sure how her book sales are going, I don't really care, but no one talks about E. Jean Carroll's allegations against our president. Like, it's just no longer in the news cycle. So, if you've read her book or have read anything by her previous to her current publication, or know anything about her personally, professionally, um, please comment below because I think we need to maybe just do a tight reopen of that conversation. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, we did do a little bit of a deeper dive in a, a previous video and you can see that. It'll, I'll link it down below or in the iCard or whatever, but it's definitely in the Women's Issues playlist. Um, we did talk about, you know, women of a certain age not having quite as loud of a voice. Uh, and what that looks like. So again, please comment and give us feedback on that. What's interesting though is Janice Dickinson, whether you are a fan of Janice Dickinson or not, or you give her credibility on any platform whatsoever is entirely besides the point on this issue. Janice Dickinson was one of the dozens of women that um, put forth allegations against Bill Cosby in the suit and we all know how that's ended up. She did win an insane settlement, um, a defamation settlement um, from the Cosby estate and 
I'm just curious if anybody has any thoughts on that because Janice Dickinson, regardless of what you think of her as a personality, as a reality TV personality, model, whatever, um, we all know she's a bit of a hot mess, but what do you think about the amount that she got, which no one knows the exact number, excuse me, it has not been disclosed, but it was quote, an insane amount of money in her settlement. And what do you just think about in general? Please comment below on the women who are receiving, have received, or might continue to receive settlements from the Cosby estate, um, not necessarily in relation to his guilt or innocence, but defamation. Um, just curious if you guys have any opinions on that. Again, most of the women that came forth against Cosby did so when they were also of a certain age. And how does that impact their credibility? How do we view them as the public when they come forward years later? And on top of that, they're not in their 20s, their 30s, they're in their 50s, they're in their 60s, some of them in their 70s. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of circle back to a couple of things that we had touched on before and even dived really deep on before and just um, given current events, kind of circle back to them. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about for sure was the, um, well, I want to talk about Big Little Lies and I want to talk about Handmaid's Tale, which we do pretty much on a regular basis because hashtag current events, we're living this world. So if um, you're new to the channel, please know this is not a safe space in terms of spoilers. We expect you to have watched or, you know, not, but like if you haven't watched, you know, come back when you have, like we're here to discuss. So with Big Little Lies season two, I think we were off to a really great start. And you've got your Merrills, you know, you have a lot of things going good. I felt like the finale was a hot mess. And what we really need to talk about is the fact that Jean-Marc Vallée, who went off to film um, Sharp Objects with Amy Adams, which you haven't, if you haven't seen Sharp Objects on HBO, the miniseries, you need to stop what you're doing right now and figure out what you've done wrong in your life and course correct. Secondly, if you have not read Sharp Objects by Jillian Flynn uh, of Gone Girl and um, the other one that nobody liked, but Charlize Theron was in the movie, nobody liked that either, whatever. Read Sharp Objects, watch Sharp Objects, but Jean-Marc Vallée, who was the kind of creative force behind the first season of Big Little Lies, he adapted the book by Leanne Moriarty, uh, he was the director, his editing is very much like that, all of that editing, that quick cut, that, that Jean-Marc Vallée, and you see a lot of that in Sharp Objects as well. Season two is actually not directed by Jean-Marc Vallée because he was off directing Sharp Objects and Blessings because it was a success. So they had given the, um, they had passed the torch to a woman named Andrea Arnold, who had directed all of season two of Big Little Lies, only to have Jean-Marc Vallée, after Sharp Objects had wrapped, come in and HBO basically gave the reins back to Jean-Marc Vallée. So she directed everything. She was supposed to have co complete creative control, which apparently she did. And then he all of a sudden became available again and HBO said, we're gonna let Jean-Marc Vallée um, resume creative control. So he was in charge of all of the editing. So the entire style of season two, uh, if you watch it, is exactly like it was in season one, which is not a bad thing per se, but her vision was basically like her project was the, the rug was ripped out from under her and if you've watched big little lies season two and if you have qualms which i i feel like you should i have qualms um 
I think that it would be so amazing to see, you know, if we had our magic wand, and as a matter of fact, I do. Sorry, it's just her uh, her mini moment. Uh, it's just there <laughs> on my altar. I'm a white bitch. If there ever was one. Oh, it it lost my face. Hold on, y'all. You gonna find my face, bro? Did you find my face? that creepy enough for y'all so it would be very interesting to see the Andrea Arnold version of Big Little Lies season two now would does that necessarily mean that the ending would be any better that we would have gotten more closure or maybe a, like a better open ending I don't know but I just think it's worth mentioning that Big Little Lies season two was on a rocket ship it was on a rocket ship and then the finale happened, and then it was just like flaccid penis. Just like flaccid penis. I'm just curious, like, you know, what could have been? So, what are your thoughts on Big Little Lies season two? Do you think they, they should do a season three? I really don't think they should. I. I just. I think no. I think not. Look at these little wings we have going on here. So that leads me to Handmaids. So with Handmaids, we have a similar jumping of the shark situation, in my personal opinion. Um, I feel like with Handmaid's Tale, you know, if you've read the book, which if you haven't, do yourselves a favor and read the book. It should be required reading for every person on the planet, male, female, otherwise, everything in between, whatever the case may be. Season one, and we've talked about this in previous vlogs, is the book, literally, with very few exceptions to the letter. Season two is one of the few the few successes where a adaptation has left the source material and actually ran with it and succeeded. I thought season two, both the opening uh, episode and the closing episode and everything in between was just magic. I thought that they really took that source material and created something new and important and amazing and yes season three i feel like we're now in a we're like in, in valley we're like we're not at a peak we're, we're just kind of like mm, which is to be expected with any show right like if you're gonna have multiple seasons whether it's an adaptation or an original narrative you're gonna have your peaks you're gonna have your valleys season three for me is like a tight valley I'm really going to ask, and I've prayed on this, I'm really going to ask the showrunners and the good Lord Jesus and whomever else to stop with the June, with the Elizabeth Olsen in the camera, intense shots, like we get it, we get it. like. I don't need like this moment anymore. I don't need like intense music, eye contact, clever line. We get it. Like that that is no longer like necessary. We don't need that to open and close every show. When that bitch was like, I need a bigger boat. Mm -mm. Season three. Oh my god. I can't. Season three had one winning moment for me. Uh which was Serena and June in front of the Lincoln Memorial, as it were, in Gilead. That, there's a huge spider crawling across my floor. That was a redeeming moment for that show. Outside of that episode, I feel like we're running in place. We're running in place a little bit, which I get, it's gonna happen. There was a great article, I think it was um, on, it was on Vulture, but I don't know where the article itself was from, but it was talking about how season three is betraying Offred or June's character insofar as like, the, the title of the article was, June needs to die. 
with the book and with season one, you are left not knowing if this woman survives her circumstances. With the show, excuse me, we clearly know she survived. She's gone full Heisenberg. I mean, she's full Heisenberg. She has embraced the darkness. She is here. She's fucking killing people left, right, and center. Um, 